My political guest tonight was born in Pakistan, became a civil engineer, moved to Australia and became the first Muslim woman elected to any parliament in Australia. Now she could potentially become the first Muslim woman to enter the Australian Senate after she beat out Senator Lee Rhiannon for the top spot on the Greens New South Wales Senate ticket in November. Would you please welcome Dr Maureen Faruqi. <laughs> welcome Maureen. Thank you. Delighted to be here, Tom. Oh, it's great to have you here. Now, a bit about you. Uh, people outside of New South Wales might not necessarily be familiar with your work. Your New South Wales portfolio responsibilities, you're in the state parliament now. Your responsibilities include the environment, transport, roads, maritime and freight, status of women, multiculturalism, animal welfare, drug and harm minimisation, young people, Western Sydney and the New South Wales mid-north coast. Did you forget anything? I think that's all of them. <laughs> Which one of those is the most boring? Oh. Oh, that's a, none of them. I, Come on! I relish every single one of them, Tom. Maritime and freight. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, I'm an engineer. Don't oh, forget that. Okay. I'm a civil engineer. Sorry. No, <laughs> no that's got to go. As you mentioned there, of course, pretty remarkable. First Muslim woman to enter any parliament in Australia. Here's the crazy thing. When you're a Muslim woman in politics, some people really hate you because of that. And they let you know that through social media. But you do a lovely thing, I think, called Love Letters to Marine, right? Now, this is when you take things that horrible things that people post on your Facebook group, you repost them as a meme, and you put a little bit of sugar on there. A bit of love in there, a I think. Bit of, well, Kill them with love, word. I say. <laughs> a little bit of sass. We have one of them here. Have a look at this, okay? So you post the original comment there. Marine Faruqi isn't even a member of parliament because she never swore on the Bible, not in the Australian constitution, that you can swear on the Koran. You've responded, hi, Lynn, I didn't swear on the Bible or the Koran, but don't worry, I have plenty of swears just for you. <laughs> hey, probably, probably not as many as Jackie Lambie. No, okay, yes. <laughs> That's quite a good point. Uh, we've got some other ones here. Let's have a look at the next one. This is quite good. Peter says, Marine the Freaky, they spell her name wrong. You wrote, better freaky than creepy Peter. <laughs> And this is my favourite. Michael says, let's start with a stoning, implying that you should be stoned, I assume, in, 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 in line with his perception of your religion. You said, sure, you chop and I'll roll. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> now, do you smoke weed? I don't. Come on! <laughs> I'm, I'm being truthful here. You don't, okay. But, you know, talking about weed, talking about legalising cannabis has nothing to do with whether I smoke it or not. But people start to ask things. Oh, I'm so, I, and, and I can. I can respond that is very a, easily. That's an issue that you're passionate about. Why? Why do you think we Absolutely. should legalise cannabis? Listen, I mean, uh, very seriously, I think we've had this war on drugs for a very long time, which hasn't worked. We have young people who are incarcerated because of just possessing weed or cannabis. You know, mm. thousands of them every year in New South Wales. It is ridiculous. Um, you know, young people with ex will experiment. What we need to do is minimise the harm caused by, um, you know, that experimentation. And we've seen across the world, things have changed. Many states in the US have yeah. legalised cannabis. It's happening in Canada. The sky hasn't fallen in. Sure. You know, we, we're still there standing strong. Australia is a little bit slow on that kind of stuff. How far away do you think we are from, from that? I mean, there's a lot of talk now about, you know, medical marijuana. I think mm. even people on the mm. conservative side of politics are certainly there on a lot of issues. But in terms of recreational mar marijuana use... We're still ages away from that. Tom, there's one thing I decided when I went into politics, that I'm not there to just sit around, um, you know, and be, feel important. I'm actually there to rock the boat. I'm there to stick my neck out. I'm there to say things like the other Greens, which no one, no one else will say. And that's what I'm doing. That's my role. I have this privilege. What's the point of being there if you don't do good things and things that people want Fair and enough. need? So... Uh, as first Muslim woman in the uh, Senate, potentially in the federal Senate coming up, if you're successful in the next election, you are somewhat the exception that proves the rule when it comes to the Greens. There are people of colour who are representatives for uh, the Greens in um, state and local councils mm. around the country, but in terms of federally, you would be it, right? Why do you think that is? Why do you think the Greens, generally speaking, are really pretty white? I think most political parties are pretty wide, if you ask me. <laughs> I tell you what, I sit in a chamber in the upper house where there are only 10 women to start off with out of 42 members, let alone the, the white and the brown and the, and the black people in there. Um, so I think that's the starting point. But I think with the Greens, they did start off as an inner city party in New South Wales. And, um, you know, we haven't, to be really serious, and I have to be honest about it, we haven't really engaged a lot with multicultural communities. We have very strong policies about multiculturalism, you know, about the right of indigenous people to self-determine. 
Uh, but we lack that diversity within ourselves. I mean, I joined the Greens because of the issue of refugees and multiculturalism. Um, but we need to change that. And that's part of my role as well, to actually change that. You talked about like wanting to do things, right? Mm. Wanting to stand up, make make moves, and not mm. just sit around and, and mm. do things. And you're a you've got a uh, engineering background, right? Which enge engineers to me are very practical people. They are about getting stuff done. So wouldn't you be frustrated being in the Greens? A, a widespread critique is that it's all very nice to say all these cool things, but how much do they actually get done? How much you get done as a, as a party? Oh, we get a lot done as a party. I think, people, <laughs> yeah, we do. I'll tell you, people have this view of the Greens that we are, you know, sitting around in a circle singing Kumbaya, Hakuna Matata, maybe smoking, yeah, smoking a bong or two, maybe from that pot, no pot. Pot, no pot, pot yeah. No pot, no pot. But we don't do that all the time. Okay. <laughs> but look, so, something like refugees, right? That's something you got involved with the party with. Obviously, very outspoken in terms, when it comes to refugees. The Greens want to increase the humanitarian intake to like 50,000 people. We're nowhere near that. This issue has been in the public square for, you know, what, 17 years if you take it from Tampa. Um, and the Greens just don't seem to have had any wins on this whatsoever. If anything, we've been going backwards with the Labor Party and the Coalition moving to the right and introducing more harsh policies. How have the Greens been effective in advocating for refugee rights? You look at the movement that has developed in the community on refugee rights. It is massive. It is massive at the moment. And that's how things will change. And I think that's where the Greens play a huge role. It's not just about being in parliament and legislative change. It is about bringing communities along with you. If the Greens weren't there, we probably wouldn't even be talking about it. You know, I think that change is coming. You know, the, um, the closing offshore detention centres, there, there is a chance, you know, obviously. But we need to bring those people here. And that's why I want to be in federal parliament. I want to kick the bloody liberal Turnbull government out. And I want to give a huge kick in the backside to the Labour Party. And, you know, we, we, we do that. We, we do put issues on the table that no one else would. I'll give you the example of decriminalising abortion. No one really had brought that issue to New South Wales Parliament okay. in more than 100 years. All right. I'm sorry, we need to move along. Yeah. Um, we do have a podcast here at Tonight, Lee. You can hear more. Uh, well, uh, Maureen will stick around. We'll have a chat. You can, you can listen to that on a podcast if you so wish. But we're asking all our political guests to pitch to our resident millennial here at Tonight, Lee. You've got to appeal to the young people. Our show is watched by cool young people. We have an in-house millennial. Her name is Lauren. She joins us now <laughs> from a cool hipster cafe with free Wi-Fi in the inner suburbs. Uh, hello, Lauren. Hey. What are you What are you eating there? It's frozen avocado. <laughs> You're eating a raw avocado. Millennials are fucking weird. All right, Marie. Now look down the barrel there. You got to talk to Lauren. I'm giving you 30 seconds. I only have a 30 second attention span. Pitch to Lauren. Why should young people, millennials like her, vote for the Greens? Your time starts now. Hello, Lauren. I know you guys get a bad rap. I've got two millennials that I own. You know, people criticize you for eating avocados. <laughs> too much time on the phone. That's completely unjustified. I think young people are being screwed over. And this is what I'll do. I'll legalize cannabis and I'll make Ten housing seconds. affordable. 420 should be your recreation, not your weekly rent. Time's up. All right, there you go. Marine for everyone. All right, Lauren. What did you think of that? Will you be voting for the Greens? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Better luck next time, Maureen. Maureen Faruqi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you. That is our show for tonight. Join us tomorrow when Labour leader Bill Shorten will be our guest. Stick around for Red Dwarf and League of Gentlemen.